Hey everybody, Joel Rock here for ChromeEngine.com. The video in the background is just gameplay footage from the Torchlight 2 beta. I decided to do a video on this because I I, lo I loved the first Torchlight, just, you know, dungeon crawlers, just, you know, going around, just left-clicking my way to victory, getting loot, exploring dungeons, having ADD and all that stuff. So when I heard the beta was actually, oh, was actually, um, actually up for, uh, for playing, I, d I just decided to take, take a whole weekend and just play the game. So, I guess for this video also, I'm going to explain the difference between like maybe Torchlight 1 and what new features they added for Torchlight 2. So one of the new features they added was they added four classes. Uh, the Engineer, which you see in the video. They added the Outlander, which is kind of the range class in this game. The Berserker, which is a uh, melee class that uses two, two specialized in two weapons, excuse me. And last one is the Ember Mage, which is the basic, basically the caster of this game. Uh, the, the talent system hasn't really been changed too much from the first one. It's basically still a, a talent a talent tree system. However, they did fix some of the issues with talent system. Like basically, if you go down one part of a tree, it actually gives a, a specific function. For example, the engineer has three trees, which one tree focuses on melee combat, the second tree focuses on gadgets, and the third tree focused on damage reduction using like a, uh, a, a, a melee weapon and a shield. So it's kind of cool that they actually started to like put more focuses on specific trees instead of just you know putting your points all over the place, which I didn't like in the first one. Like I had played a, a destroyer and I found like I, I didn't go. I went mostly down the, the I believe it was the, the titan tree, which is more offensive, and the other trees just to me didn't just seem very viable so I mean that's how I played my game but I'm just kind of glad they're trying to focus the trees down more in this game. Combat in Torchlight 2 is pretty much remained the same from the first one I mean it's just really satisfying just using your abilities and just destroying everything in your path. Melee is feels the same, range is the same, your spells you know are just they're fun to look at, they're, col they're colorful, vibrant you know destructive I guess is the more word I'm looking for. And I'm kind of glad they didn't change the combat because, like I said, that was like one of the main draws for me for playing the first one was just the, the the combat and using weapons and spells were just so great. The pet system also hasn't really changed too much, so your pet still is your a, a companion. They help you attack enemies. They still store stuff for you. Go to the, you know, you send the town, sell all your stuff you don't want to use. But they did add one feature, which is really really cool. Uh, pets can now buy basic uh, consumable items from town. So, for example, they can help you buy potions, health potions, mana potions, uh, identity scrolls, and, and town scrolls, which is a really you know, awesome feature. But I kind of feel that if you actually end up getting the, the uh, identification spell, like the town portal scroll spell, it, it, it kind of like limits the function of that, though. But then it's, it's still cool, though. I mean, you can still buy potions, which you still need in this game anyway. You know, you still need potions. So it, it's, still, it's still a cool system to actually use. Weapons and armor uh, f for the most part are, this, are the same function. If you have uh, gem slots open for your weapons you can still put gems in them. That hasn't really changed. Same thing goes for armors, armor too. But what they did change is your requirement to use weapons and I armor. For example, if you actually come across maybe a two-handed weapon, you, you, you basically need to ref uh, fulfill like one of the requirements in order for you to use a weapon. So for example, if you have like a weapon that's like level 15 and requires like 50 strength you can either to use the weapon you can either reach the level or you can actually put points to the stat to actually use the weapon so basically if you're like a level 12 engineer and you want to use level 15 item you can actually put the, amount, the certain amount of stat points into your stats and you can actually use the weapon you can actually use like a weapon that's three levels above you which is actually pretty cool my only concern with with this system is that people might wanted like use weapons that are not really geared towards their class or their spec. So let's say for example you get like a one-handed weapon that just has focus and has focus and if you want to be like like a melee, I mean melee like engineer that you know you may put put stats towards you know, points towards a stat that you you know you may not want to optimize your build this is what I'm trying to get though and that could be very problematic if, especially if I want to team up with people and I want to actually do like the hard modes I want to make sure do the, and make sure people are actually optimized to what spec and what class they are so I don't know how Runic Games is going to approach that s system is if they're going to like kind of tell people like what stats to go to or like what weapons to use because I, I do like the idea that if I'm an engineer I can actually like attack with two-handed weapons if I wanted to 
you know, I, I like that idea. It's a cool idea, you know, just able to use weapons far above your level. It's, it's always great, but this, but there's kind of like a, I guess, like I said, a catch-22 that, you know, what if you come across a weapon that really not for your spec that you go to and, and your class you pick. So it, it can be kind of, um, I guess, jarring a little bit. So we'll have to see how that pans out when this game goes live. So what else? Uh, fishing hasn't changed at all. Fishing still functions the same way. You go to a uh, fishing hole throughout the world, you know, click on an icon, and then once the outer circle reaches the circle, you, the, the button you're supposed to press, you get a fish. Fish are work Fish work the same way too. They give stats to your pets. They turn them to different beasts. But I, I believe there's one thing that did change. I had noticed while I was playing the game that fishing holes have like a, a certain limit you can use them, like a number of times you can actually fish in that hole before it, you can stop fishing into it, though. I don't remember that being in the first game. And I did notice that if I, I actually caught a fish in these like these types of fishing holes, I actually got way better like fish, like green level fish, blue level fish. So it, it's cool that there's actually like limited fit, uh, fishing holes you can do in the game and actually get really good, good like fish and, and stats for your pet. Questing hasn't really changed at all too, but if you notice on the right side of my screen, there's actually a crash, uh, excuse me, a quest tracker, which wasn't in the first game, and and if you notice the mini-map, there's actually uh, star icons that show, you know, what where the quests are, so that's a great new feature they put in there to actually find, find out where your quests are, and also, um, it, uh, they actually, uh, the quest log is uh, color-coded, so yellow means it's actually a primary, you know, primary quest, and then greens will be like um, secondary quests, which you can track later on. So another big, big feature of this game is, is now there's now an open world in this game. You know, the first torchlight was mainly focused on the, the, the main town torchlight and actually just the mine and mine features within torchlight under the ground itself. Now the world is open now. There's actually different biomes, different cities you could visit now. There's a snow biome. There's a jungle. There's aquatic or river, there's still temples, there's still caves, you know, so it, it's great that now when you actually go outside and do quests, there's actually a variety of places you can go. Dungeons are now are now random now. I mean, they were random in the first game. Well, let me take, let me take a step back with that. In the first game, there were actually map fragments which you bought from vendors or you, or you found throughout the game. And when you actually used them, they actually would open portals for you to try different levels that were separate from like the main quest. Now, what you do is now you actually find dungeons throughout the world, and that actually kind of replaced the whole map, the map quest system, which I like. I, I like that. I, I like exploring. I like you know finding a like random random dungeon with with a quest giver usually around the area to actually give you quests and items to complete it, items and tasks to complete. And this is great though. I really didn't like the map system because it actually just repeated like actually places you've been in Torchlight One. But the but but they were harder, which is great. There was were more of a challenge, but I still like this new, you know, open world system overall. It's just fantastic. So I'm gonna take a step back and go back to like the class system. When you actually pick your class for the first time, you can actually customize your character, meaning that you can actually pick a gender. And you could change uh, facial features and like hair, you know, decorations on them and things like that. Because in the first game, you were just limited between three classes, and there were there were either like gender locks. So like, if you wanted to pick a destroyer, the melee class, he was just a male. If you wanted to be a vanquisher, you were you were stuck being a female character and no way to change your, your features. So I'm glad they actually added uh, these features in the game. My only little complaint about it, though, I kind of wish it was a little more. Uh, varied. Now I don't know if this if this is going to be a beta feature or they're going to add like more, you know, customization to characters uh, beyond, you know, beyond the the launch of the game. I know there's a die system, so you can't change the color of, of your armor, which is great. But I kind of would have liked to seen you know more options for facial features and more decorations for your characters. But I'm not really. It doesn't really, you know, I I could say deter me from playing the game or like you know. Yelling at Runa Games for like having a, a a lack of like customization. It's still it's still great that they have it in there. Fantastic. Also, another big thing in this game there's actually land support and internet support. The first game was if you haven't played it, it's actually just a single player game. You can you couldn't like play with your friends online, you know. But now they added a a land an offline land feature and an internet feature. Uh, 
when I played the beta, only the internet feature was was available, so I had to make my own custom game, and I really didn't experience too much, excuse me, too much lag, you know, in, when I was playing the game, which is great, so, but, you know, things can change when game, go li game goes live and more and more people actually start playing the game, so we'll see how that goes. I didn't get a chance to check out the... Uh, there's also a, a friend feature, Lloyd. You can you can invite your friends to your game. I haven't. I didn't really try that system out. See how that worked. I do know that they're supposed to. When you have more people join your game, the enemy is supposed to scale towards how many people there. Are, so that's a great feature right there. You know, and I think that's pretty much going to do it though. So you can actually buy the game on Steam or do PerfectWorld.com for about twenty dollars. You can also buy through Steam a four pack for about six dollars, or you can actually buy a copy for yourself and give three other copies to your friends on Steam, which is which is actually a great feature. Just you know, I, I like games that I like or you know reasonably priced, and you there's actually features you can actually pay for like give more copies to your friends. So that's pretty much going to do for the end of the video. So if you like the video, you know, give it a, give it a like. You know, subscribe to ChromaEngine.com and visit ChromaEngine.com to see more content made by the Chroma Engine crew. This is Jellarock, and I'll see you guys later.